What's up, YouTube? Thomas L here. It's Thursday. That means it's time to talk about the new movies opening this week. Alright, now, of course, last week we had Avengers Endgame, which, of course, was just awesome. So we got, like, three films this week that's hoping, that's probably hoping to, uh, beat out Endgame, but it's, come on, it's not gonna happen. I mean, these movies might actually end up being great, but to beat Endgame, yeah. Of course, that's a topic for another time, but anyway. Here's what's opening this week. Alright, first film that's opening is Longshot. You know, I, I gotta say, I thought it was, I think it was a uh, a not so good uh, thing of you know moving this from February to to uh, the week after uh, Endgame. Cause I mean, come on, this movie I think probably I'm I, the movie haven't been released, so it might be a hit. But for some reason I, I really don't see it being that much of a big hit to be honest. Yet. But the reviews have been pretty decent though. And the trailers have looked funny, and, you know, I do like both Seth Rogen and Charlie Theron, so hopefully the movie comes out, and it'll be awesome, and it'll do great, you know, but... Anyway, uh, Longshot, I think, looks really funny. I mean, the film stars Seth Rogen as a character named uh, Fred Flosky, who is a, a gifted and free spirit journalist with an uh, effigy for trouble. And so you got a uh, Charlotte Field played by Charlize Theron, who is one of the most influential women in the world, and she's a f she's also like running for president. And the thing that her and uh, Flosky have in common is that Flosky once actually babysit her when uh, they were young. So of course, when he like uh, finally you know reconnects with Charlotte, he like charms her. Um, and as she prepares to run for uh, her presidential, you know, uh, Charlotte, you know, hires Fred as her speechwriter, and, you know, sparks fly between the two. I mean, I think it looks pretty cute and charming. You know, I do love Seth Rogen. I'm a big fan of Charlie Theron. You got O'Shea Jackson Jr. in here, who I think, who's, of course, the son of Ice Cube. And he's been pretty decent lately. Like, I mean, I, I remember when he was it uh, when he played Ice Cube's son in that movie, Straight Outta Compton. I thought he was great in that, but really, I just thought he was, you know, just, uh, imitating his dad. But then he did this little movie called Ingrid Goes West, and he was great in that. I thought he was, like, the best part of that movie, uh, Dan of Days. He's also in the new Godzilla movie, so... Hey, I mean... Pretty cool. I, I you know, I think O'Shea Jackson Jr., he's just an awesome actor, so glad to see him. His career, um, doing great here. And Longshot looks like it could be pretty funny, so I'm de I'm actually gonna see Longshot tomorrow, so so I'll probably uh, do like a review or something. All right, also open this week is a film called The Intruder. Now this stars Dennis Quaid, um, Micah Ely, and Megan Good. Now here's what it's about: when a young married couple played by Ely and Good buys their dream house in the Napa Valley, they think they have found the perfect home to take their next step as fa as a family. But when she's, but when the strangely attached seller, played by Dennis Quaid, continues to infiltrate their lives, they begin to suspect that he has motivations behind a quick sale. I mean, Dennis Quaid looks creepy in this. Now, I also do like Micah Ely. He's a pretty awesome actor. Megan Good's really great. I mean, how great was Megan Good in Shazam, by the way? I, I don't make Good's great, man. And the movie is directed by, uh, by this director named, um, Dion Taylor, who also did stuff like Meet the Blacks. He also did that, um, that Paula Patton movie that got released last year, uh, the, uh, sex trafficking movie. Oh, Traffic. You know, he did pretty good with that, so I'm really curious. I'm intrigued by Intruder, although the only thing I did not like about the show is that they show way too much, and that's usually not a good sign sometimes. Sometimes, you know, movies that show, movie shows that show too much, sometimes the films could be okay, but sometimes not, so hopefully the Intruder will be pretty good, man. Although the reuse is like a 25%, which... I kind of suspect a movie like this isn't going to get um, that much critical love, so hopefully it'll still be decent. Who knows? I mean, Traffic didn't get that much good reason. That movie was actually pretty decent, so... 
Who has what I say? Also open this week, there is a film, Ugly Dolls, which is based on um, a toy line by Hasbro. Here's what it's about. In the adorably different town of Uglyville, where is celebrated, strange is special and, be and beauty is embraced as more than simply meets the eye. The free spirit Moxie, voiced by Kelly Clarkson, and her ugly daughter's friends live every day in a whirlwind of bliss, letting their freak flags fly in a celebration of life and its endless of bliss, letting their freaks up. Oh, wait. Alright, in um, this news um, or story, the Ugly Dolls will go on a journey beyond the comfortable borders of Ugly Spell. There, they will confront what it means to be different, struggle with their uh, desire to be loved, and ultimately discover that uh, you don't have to be perfect to be amazing. Now, this has a really cool voice cast. Like, lots of the voices in this are like... Um, uh, like a voice, like lots of the characters in this are voiced by uh, music artists. Like you got uh, Nick Jonas in this, Pippa, uh, who else is in this? Um, Janelle Monet, Charlie XCX, um, BB Rex is in this. Some pretty good uh, voice work. So I'm I'm really curious to see this. You know, it's uh, directed by the uh, director who did uh, Shrek 2. I uh, love Shrek 2. Yet again, she yeah again Kelly Asbury also did. Uh, no man, Juliet, and but hopefully Ugly Dolls will be pretty decent, because the trailers have been okay, I mean, yeah, again, the trailers for the Emoji movie was okay, too, and look how that turned out, so hopefully this won't suffer the same fate, but it looks much better than the Emoji movie, so that, there, there, that, and good thing is, even if the movie ends up being terrible, at least there'll be some good music in it, because the music in this is really great. I mean, I think the trail probably would have stunk if there wasn't no music in it, I think. But, anyway. Now, those are the uh, only major wide releases coming out this week. I mean, of course, there isn't, like, anything other major coming out. Kind of surprised there's only, there's, like, three films opening. I would expect maybe, like, a two or maybe one, because, I mean, the week after uh, Endgame? Yeah, that's... But, anyway. Other stuff that's opening this week... There's a movie called El Chicano. Now, of course, out now we got Avengers Endgame, which is an awesome superhero movie. Now, this is actually technically another superhero film. It looks like a Mexican version of The Crow or or maybe Dread or something like that. Here's what it's about. When LAPD detective Diego Hernandez, played by Ra Castello, is signing a career is signed a career-making case investigating a vicious cartel. He uncovers links to his brother's supposed suicide and a turf back that's about to swallow his neighborhood. Torn between playing the by the book and seeking justice, he, resur he re uh, resurrects the Max Street legend El Chicano, now out to take down his childhood buddy turned gang boss, he sets off a bloody war to defend his city and avenge his brother's murder. This looks cool. I mean, I saw the trail for this, and it looks like it's going to be really fun. And besides uh, Ra uh, Ra Raul uh, Castillo, the other cast in this also includes uh, George Lopez. I mean, he plays the uh, businessman. Like, I mean, he kind of looks like a Mexican version of Trump, really. Anyway, and also uh, Amy Garcia is also in this, and nice to see a George Lopez show reunion between the two. And, and also, pretty cool, because uh, Garcia is also in uh, the new season of Lucifer, which premieres on a Monday, so... I oh, wait, I think it premieres Monday or one... Sometime, somewhere around that line, but... Anyway, El Chicana, I think, could be some pretty fun, and definitely gotta check this one out. Also out this week, there's a film called Shadow, which is directed by Zhang uh, ya Yemo. Uh, he actually directed movies like uh, Hero, House of Flying Daggers, and he also directed that horrendous Matt Damon movie, The Great War. Oh, God, that movie was so bad. Oh, man, that movie was... The Great War was just... I mean, it's pretty much an American um, on The Great War. I mean, that's what it really is. Yeah. 
Anyway, back to this. It looks like, um, right up uh, Zang's alley, because, I mean, Hero and House of Flying Daggers has some of the best cinematographies I've ever seen in movies. Like, their cinematographies are really perfect. And here, uh, he, of course, once again pushes the boundaries of uh, Wexa actions to create a film like no other, masterfully painting a uh, canvas of inky blacks and grays, punctured with uh, bursts of color from the Blood King. The military le uh, commander has a secret weapon, a shadow, a lookalike, who can fool both his enemies and the king himself. Wow. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's not it's not playing anywhere near around me, so I'll probably have to maybe wait till it you know, comes on TV or online or whatever. But this looks like it could be loads of fun, and I kind of want to check it out. I mean, a Hero and House of Flying Daggers was pretty decent, so... I mean, he has a major misfire, which was the Great War, so hopefully this is um, Zane's you know, major comeback, you know? Also out this week, there's a film called Nonfiction, which is directed by acclaimed director Ol Oliver Assessors. I always mispronounce his name, but he's actually an okay director. He did the movie uh, Clouds and Sills Marit, which, by the way, Chris Stewart was the first uh, American actress to ever win a uh, Caesar Award. So for any Chris Stewart haters, um, she has a Caesar Award on her mantle, so just saying so you know. Anyway. Now, in nonfiction, it stars Juliet Binoche and uh, Jamai um, Gomai Sinet, who uh, reunite with uh, Oliver for this uh, worry, uh, sly, seductive tale of sex, lies, and literature. This looks like it could be something pretty interesting. I mean, I like Juliet Binoche. I mean, she was also in that. Uh, she was in the uh, first Godzilla movie, and. Uh, she also could be seeing tears now with uh, with Patterson for uh, for High Life. So she's a pretty decent French actress as well. I've seen a couple of French movies she was in, and she's pretty good. And Oliver is a cool director, so I'll probably give this one a shot sometime. Also, out this week, there's a film called Tell It to the Bees, which stars Anna Paquin and a uh, Holiday Granger. Here, Anna Packman plays a character named Dr. Jean uh, Markham, who returns to a uh, town to uh to who returns to the town she uh, left as a teenager to take over her father's medical practice. And so, like when a schoolyard shuffle lends Charlie, played by uh, Gregor Selkirk, in her surgery, she invites him to visit uh the hives in her garden and tells his secret to the bees, as she once did. The new friendship between the boy and the beekeeper. Brings his mother, Lydia, played by uh, Holiday Granger, into Jean's world. And on, they, of course, like, uh, fall and stuff like that. And it takes place in 1950s uh, Small Britain. Small Town Britain, I meant to say. Uh, I admit, I saw the trailer, and it didn't really wow me, to be honest with you. I do like Anna Packard, so I'll probably still give this one a shot. Holiday Granger is pretty decent, so maybe someday I'll give it a go. Also out this week, there's a film called Bolden, which is about a uh, fame um, jazz player Buddy Bolden. Now, this has a cool cast. Like, the cast in this includes uh, Gary Carr from uh, The Deuce Fame, Michael Rooker, a.k.a. Yandi from Gone of the Galaxy, Ian McShane, who right now needs a hit after uh, Hellboy. I think this looks like it could be pretty decent. I mean, the trailers was okay and all, but... It didn't like wow me, but I mean, I do love me a good story, uh, a good true story film. So I'll probably still give this one a shot. Now I mean, I don't know a whole lot about Buddy Bolden to be honest with you, because I'm not really all that big with jazz. But hey, I do love a good true story thing, so I'll probably still give this one a shot. Also, at this week, there's a sci-fi movie called uh, Clara. In Clara. It tells the truth. It tells the story of Isaac Bruno, played by Patrick J. Adams, who is an astronomer consumed by the search for life beyond Earth. Convinced that uh, the universe is a dark and lonely place, Isaac meets uh, Claire, played by Prelo Larzalam Troen Belisaro, and 
who's a uh, artist who shares um, his fascinating uh, fascination for the wonders of space and their like unlikely collaboration leads to a deep uh, connection and a profound discovery. I mean, the trailer didn't do so much for me, but I believe uh, Patrick and Tron are like married or something like that. So hey, it's a uh, it's a family affair, I guess. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think this could be okay, but the trailer just didn't do much for me. So I'll probably give this a shot, maybe like online or whatever. But who knows? Maybe it'll be uh, awesome. There's also some a uh, film called Savage, which I don't know a whole lot about. There's also um, a Werner Herzog directed film called uh, Meeting uh, Gobbuka. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, there's also a film called A uh, Red Con One, which I don't know a whole lot about. There's some film called The Dirty Kind, which could be okay. I don't know a whole lot about that either. There's also The Sons of Others, Bottle Blues. And there's also a movie called A uh, Dead Trigger, which stars uh, Dolph Lundgren and is based on a video game. And this is probably going to go on the list of terrible movies based on uh, video games. Because, I, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, so I guess I can't really comment on the film myself. But the trailer looks god-awful. I mean, yeah. I like Duff Lundgren, but sometimes he could be hit and miss it. So, oof, who knows? Maybe maybe it'll come out. Maybe it'll be uh, an awesome video game film. But, yeah. Anyway, now... Besides those, there are a few films coming to uh, Netflix this week. There's um, Extremely Wicked, Shockly Eva and Vile, which stars Zac Efron as Ted Bundy. And uh, Lily Collins is also in this. Um, Jim Parsons is in this film. Uh, hey, Net Netflix has been pretty decent with uh, Ted Bundy-based stuff. You know, they, of course, had that uh, documentary about Ted Bundy. And which, by the way, this movie is directed by the same director as that documentary series. So, yeah, that. Anyway, I think this looks great. You know, the trails have so many. Zac Efron, I mean, him as Ted Bundy could be interesting to watch. So, yeah, come me surprised. I'll definitely check this one out. Also, at this on Netflix this week, there's um, The Last Summer, which uh, stars the likes of uh, Riverdale actor um, KJ Appa, um, the Foster's actress Maya Mitchell, and a couple of other um, good actors are in this. Anyway, uh, The Last Summer, you know, uh, features several in intersecting uh, stories and follows a group of, rec of recent high school graduates as they navigate their way through their final summer before taking off for college. I mean, this actually feels like a movie that John Hughes would have directed years ago. Like, it has, like, a John Hughes feel to it, and I do love John Hughes stuff, so, hey, and I do love me a good uh, coming-of-age story, like, Netflix has been pretty great with these uh, coming of age stories, whether it's a uh, Sierra Burgess's Loser or uh, or Dumplin' or Out uh, of Strange Love and stuff like that. So I'll probably give this one a shot on on uh, Netflix. So it could be interesting. And also KJ Abba, I think he's great as Archie on uh, Riverdale. So seeing him in um in a feature film like this could be interesting to watch. Now, finally, um, also on Netflix, which actually got... Now, this film that I'm about to talk about actually just premiered on Netflix yesterday, so it's a little um, earlier than you expect. But it's a documentary about uh, Alexandra uh, Cortez um, called Knock Down the House, which I mean, I'm not really all that interested in these type of documentaries. But it actually premiered at Sundance, and it has like a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, so... Hey, maybe, it, maybe most people, lots of people really like it, but a movie like this probably isn't for me. I mean, to be honest, I try not to uh, follow too much politics stuff, to be honest with you, but, hey, I, who knows, maybe the movie, I'll probably still give it a go sometime, maybe online, but who knows. It might actually uh, end up being great, but, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me lose you guys. What movies are you interested in uh, checking out this week? Drop a comment below, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is Tom Sell, signing off.